Welcome to the GMAT 41's Mathematics class. In our class today, I'll be teaching you solutions to simultaneous equation. Yes, how to solve simultaneous equation. In mathematics, there are three major equations that have been identified. We have that which we call linear equation, we have quadratic equation, and of course, we have simultaneous equation. In my previous video lessons, I had treated a concept of quadratic equation where I explained how to use factorization to obtain your answer and how to use completing the square method to obtain your answer. We'll be focusing on how to solve simultaneous equation this time around. And I want to state clearly how important this aspect of mathematics is. No matter your level, whether you are in O level or advanced level, university, colleges of education, polytechnics, you need the knowledge of simultaneous equations. Because there are certain things you might be solving in area of calculation and you've just started something before you know, it's leading you to simultaneous equation. You may not see it exactly in the form of these questions we have on the board that we're going to look at, like just x and y. But it may contain variables which replaces this x and y for you to solve. Permit me quickly to make a reference to a course I am going to teach advanced level students within this period. The course is known as Ordinary Differential Equation, ODE. Although what we do in that course is a kind of advanced form of calculus. But then, there are areas in that course that we apply simultaneous equation in order to survive solving problems there. For example, I can give you a solution to an unknown differential equation and ask you to find the differential equation that has that solution. One of the methods we can use to solve that problem is using simultaneous equation method. Again, there is this type of solution in that ODE called particular solution. When you want to obtain that particular solution for a second order differential equation, you would need the knowledge of simultaneous equation. So I am saying this so that whether you are in O level for now, you need this. If you are in advanced level, don't think that you've come past it. You still need this knowledge to handle some problems at that level. So let us get to the business of our class today. We have these six questions on the board. Okay, how do we identify simultaneous equations? Simultaneous equation is simply equations that contain two or more equations in it. Like in our case here, we have a pair of equations that forms our question for us. A pair of equations means we have two equations in it. Look at, like question number one, this is one of the equations, and then this is another equation. Question number two, this is one of the equations, and then this is the second equation. You could have up to three, four or more equations, are you following right, with unknown in them. Such kind of equation is called simultaneous equation. Now there are two methods we use in solving simultaneous equation. One of the methods is elimination method. The other one is substitution method. When solving problems, you have the choice of using any of the method, except if your examiner demands that you use a particular method to solve. In this class, we are going to focus on how to use elimination method to solve simultaneous equation. And then you could hear the word elimination. To eliminate means to remove, to kick off. So we are going to see how we use that method to solve simultaneous equations for these questions we have on the board. Let us move on straight to solution number one. The equations we have there are 3x plus 2y equal to 10, that is equation 1, x plus 2y equal to 2, that is equation 2. Now these are the pair of equations we have to solve for question number 1. How do we handle this using the elimination method? By that term, elimination, what we are going to do is to kick off either x or y. Once again, that depends on you. You decide which one to eliminate. There are mathematical procedures, steps that you follow to achieve that elimination. And so at this point, I am going to 
tell you a secret. You know, there is a difference between I know how to do this, I know how to solve this problem, and you know why you are solving it in that way. Of course, when someone learns as much as possible, knowing why a particular approach is used in some of the problem, such person is regarded as being intelligent. Okay, I know how to solve it, I know how to solve it, but why do you do it that way? Perhaps the person cannot explain. Such approach to learning, okay, makes learning quite tough. Because if your examiner now has to adjust the question in one way or the other that seems a bit complicated, then maybe it becomes a problem. So I'm going to tell you secrets you need. These are background knowledge that you need in order to be able to eliminate a particular variable. Here, our variables that is unknown are x and y. So what do you do in order to eliminate? Now the secrets you need are, you should know the concept of LCN. You see, concept of LCN. These we learn it at lower basic, if I am not mistaken. They're about from primary 3 and 4, okay? You see? So you need the, that knowledge from that level to be able to handle this. The reason for that is if I decide any variable, any of the unknown to eliminate, for me to eliminate, I have to make sure that that, that that variable, its value in the two equations must be the same. I have to make sure that they must be what? The same. But if a question is given to you and it happens that the unknown, maybe in equation 1 and 2, are already the same, then you can just proceed straight to eliminate. So I've told you one secret, you need LCN to deal with problems like simultaneous equation in order to eliminate a particular variable. So in this question given to us, you observe that y in equation 1 and y in equation 2, their values are the same, 2, 2. So in this case, we don't need to bother ourselves trying to find out the common LCM, okay? You can just go straight to eliminate. Because their values are the same. The question now is, what would I do to eliminate? You can do any one of these two things that applies, and I'll tell you their conditions anyway. To eliminate, you either add the two equations, or you subtract one of the equations from the other one. The question will not be, when do you know when to add the two equations? And when do you know that, ah, for me to eliminate here, I would have to subtract one equation from the other? The answer is simple. If you're eliminating using addition, that is, you're adding one of the equations to the other one, this is done when the variable you want to eliminate has different signs in the equations you are dealing with. Like in this case, if to eliminate y, I have to apply addition process. It means that, okay, as this one is plus 2y, this 2y here will now be what? Minus, minus 2y. So in using addition to eliminate, the variable, the unknown you want to eliminate must have different signs. What about elimination using subtraction? When do you do that? To apply subtraction in eliminating a particular variable, that particular unknown you want to eliminate must have the same signs in the two equations. Like in this case, you notice that this 2y here is plus. And then equation 2, 2y is plus. The signs are the same. Therefore, to eliminate, you subtract one of the equations from the other. So all these foundations, please, you need to be aware of them. Once you are aware of them, your problem is solved. As a quick summary to the secrets I've given to you, you need to have knowledge of LCM. You need to also know how to eliminate. Whether you're using addition or you're using what? Subtraction. And I've told you, if the signs are different, you use addition. If the signs are the same of that guy you want to eliminate, if the signs are the same, you use subtraction. Don't forget this. So let us proceed straight and deal with this. In this case, we are going to subtract one of the equations from the other one. It's your choice. Are you following, right? Since y has the same value in the two equations, I'll just eliminate straight. 
So I'm going to do equation 1 minus equation 2. If you do that, this will be 3x minus x, and that will give us 2x. Then come to this, 2y minus 2y. You don't need to bother yourself there anymore because you already decided that it is y you are eliminating, and they have the same value already. So you don't need to stress yourself there. It will always give you 0. Are you getting me right? 2y minus 2y is 0. Then that will be equal to 10 minus 2, and 10 minus 2 gives us 8. At this point, divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient. By what is multiplying the unknown here, the unknown is x. So divide both sides by 2. If you divide it by 2, you'll be left with x. Divide 8 by 2, you get 4. And so this is the value of x. Now that I've obtained the value of x, the next thing I have to do is to use that value of x to get the value of y. Are you following, right? Use the value of x to get the value of y. So here, it's as if you are doing a form of substitution. Are you getting it? You are going to come to any of these equations. We have two equations here. So pick one of them. The choice is yours. Are you following? And then wherever you see x, fix the value for. Then solve for the unknown y. So let us do that. We are going to put x equal to 4 in equation whatever. You decide the equation like I said. We have two equations there. But when selecting equations to substitute in, I already tell students, please, watch out. The one that will be easier for you to get the remaining unknown answer, go for that one. Now, if you look at equation 1 and 2, I think equation 1 has kind of bigger values. Are you following, right? Equation 2 has smaller values. So, although both of them can give you the same answer for y when you fix in the value of x, which is 4, but wisdom and intelligence would require that if I find myself an example, I should use equation 2 to get y. So you see, right? Like I say it's not a law. You can use any one of them. But you want to apply wisdom sometimes in selecting which one to use. Okay, so we are going to say you are fixing x equal to 4 in equation 2. Do that. It implies that in place of this x, you fix 4. Let me enclose it in brackets to tell you that I substituted something. Then plus 2y. We don't know y. That would be equal to 2. Now, this is 4 plus 2y. We are solving for y, so we have to make y subject of the formula. We will take this 4 to the, left hand, to the right hand side. That becomes 2y equal to 2 minus 4. And then 2y will give us minus 2. Therefore, divide both sides by the coefficient of y, which is 2. If you divide it by 2, you get minus 1. We can conclude. The value of x comma y from what we've solved already, x is 4 and y is minus 1. Good. So we have solved this simultaneous equation. All we just did was get the value of x and y. But then, you don't just wake up and start getting it. There are certain principles that will guide you. Remember, I mentioned LCM. We didn't apply it here because already one of the unknown has the same value in both equations. So it goes straight to eliminate. And then I give you another secret that you want to always remember. Which approach of elimination would you use? Is it to add the equations or to subtract one of them from the other? And we said it depends on the signs. When the signs are different, you add. When the signs are the same, you subtract. So once you do that, solve whatever you have there, that's it. Let us move on to our second question we have here on the board. This is what we have in question number 2. x plus 2y equal to 7. 2x minus 3y equal to minus 3 whole number 1 over 2. So we have to find x and y. Alright, for this question, the first thing we'll have to do is to change this mixed fraction into improper fraction. So I'm going to rewrite equation 2 as 2x minus 3y equal to, this is going to give us, Denominator here, 2 times this whole number, minus 3, will give us minus 6. Add it to this numerator, 1. And, uh, of course, if you have minus 6 plus 1, that's going to give you minus 5. So this is minus 5 all over 2. So this is actually the same as equation 2. Are you following, right? But then, I don't need this fraction. I don't need it. And so I have to find a way to clear the fraction, because 
the Clef fraction you multiply through by the LCM. And if you look at this side and this side of the equation, you notice that the overall LCM is 2 because this is over 1, this is over 1, and this is 2. So the denominators are 1, 1, 2. The LCM of such number is 2. And so we are going to use that LCM2 to multiply each of the terms here. And that's going to give us, okay, so I'll go with this, 4x minus, use the 2 to multiply this minus 3, you get minus 6y equal to, use the 2 to multiply minus 5. That 2 will cancel this denominator, is that okay? So you simply be left with minus 5. So you see this is equation 2 proper. This is equation 2 proper. At this point, I'm not set to solve this question. Remember, we are using elimination method to solve this simultaneous equation. And so I'm going to determine, okay, which of the unknown that I would like to eliminate. This is equation 1. We have x. That's 1x. Plus 2y equal to 7. Now in equation 2, we have 4x minus 6y equal to minus 5. Now, I want to eliminate x. It's my choice. Someone else may choose to eliminate y first in its solving, okay? Now, looking at equation 1 and 2, there is none of the unknown. None of the variables has the same value. Are you following? Now, this x is 1x, and x in equation 2 is 4x. So if I want to eliminate x, I must make sure that the two x, you know, that is this x here and this x here, they have the same coefficient. They have the same multiplier. So how would I arrive at that? Simple. This is 4x. So you ask yourself, and this is 1x. So 4x and 1x, what's the LCM? 4 and 1, the LCM is 4, is that not so? The LCM is what? 4. And so all you now have to do is make sure that each of the x in equation 1 and 2, the coefficient is 4. Because like I said, the quotient of x here is 1, the quotient of x here is 4. 1 and 4, their LCM is 4. So make sure that each of these x, what is multiplying them, would be what? 4. And so it's simple. I'll move on to equation 1, and then I'll multiply equation 1 by 4. Four times x here will give us what? 4x. Plus 4 times 2y will give us 8y. 4 times 7 will give us 28. This will now become equation 3, per se. It will become what? Equation 3. But I obtained it from equation 1. Now, usually, I prefer using equation 1 with an alphabet to define it. Why I like doing that is for someone to look at this and then know that we got this equation from equation 1. So I don't want to label it equation 3. You may choose to label it as equation 3 or any other thing you want. There is no rule as to this is how you label your equation. So we're going to move on now. You notice that this equation 1, after multiplying it by 4, it had produced 4x. Now equation 2 already has 4x. So there is no need going to multiply equation 2 by anything. But I used to remember in those days when we were in secondary school, okay? They'll tell you, at, at this point, you multiply equation 2 by 1. Yeah, remember, the quotient of x you said should be what? 4. And then since this is 4 already, if you still want to maintain that 4, it means you have to multiply this 4x by what? 1. And whatever you do to any one of them, you do it for the remaining terms. So, going to multiply equation 2 by 1, will it change anything? Something times 1 is that thing. So at this point, you don't need to go say, okay, multiply equation 1 by 4 and equation 2 by 1. Multiplying equation 2 by 1 is a waste of time. Now, at this point, we have equation 1a. Compare it with equation 2 and notice that their coefficients are the same. So I cannot eliminate. To eliminate, look at their signs are the same. Positive, positive. So you are going to subtract one of the equations from another one. Okay, so I am going to subtract equation 2 from equation 1a. Once again, it is my choice. Somebody may choose to subtract equation 1a from equation 2. But like I said, usually, I, there are certain things I look out for. I observe that equation 1a somehow has a kind of higher value than equation 2. So I now decide to do equation 2 my... Okay, I now decide to do equation 1a 
minus equation two. A kind of bigger value minus a smaller one. I'm working out equation one a minus equation two. So looking at this, just go straight on and work it out. 4x minus 4x, you know, that's what you're eliminating. It will definitely go to zero. 8y minus minus 6y. Remember that this 6y has its own follow on minus. And already we are doing subtraction. Are you getting me right? So it's going to be 8y minus, you go to the light term of it in equation 2, and the light term is minus 6y. So 8y minus minus 6y. And if you do that, that would give us um, minus minus is plus. So eventually you have 8y plus 6y, which is 14y. And that would be equal to 28 minus minus 5. Because this 5 has minus. 28 minus, which is what you are doing to eliminate. Minus 5. Which eventually becomes 28 plus 5. And that would give us 33. In conclusion, to get our y, it's equal to 33 over 14. Now, there is no common factor that can divide 33 and 14. So, we leave the answer like this. Having obtained y, we can now proceed to get x. To get our x, all you now need to do is go to any of the equations. Equation 1 or equation 2 or equation 1a. Wherever you see y, fix 33 over 14 there. And then solve for x. Preferably, I will go with equation 1 to obtain my y because it contains smaller number of terms. So moving to equation 1, I'm going to simply write put y equal to 33. You can choose to use the statement substitute y equal to 33 over 14 in equation 1. Doing that, you have x, then you maintain your x there, plus 2y and y is 33 over 14. So I will close it in brackets. And that will be equal to 7. All you now need to do is to solve this equation and obtain the value of x. This is 2 times 33 over 14. This 2 will reduce this 14. 2 will divide 2 to give you 1. Because this 2 is numerator, you know. 2 will divide this 14 to give you 7. So this will eventually be x plus 33 over 7 equal to 7. At this point, you are solving for x, you may decide to move this 33 over 7. To the right hand side, you have 7 minus 33 over 7. Or you may decide to clear fraction. The choice is yours. Are you following right? But uh, to clear fraction, you use the LCM 7 to multiply each of these terms. I guess that is going to give us 7x plus 33 equal to 49. 7 times this 7x. 7 times 33 over 7. The 7 will cancel out. 7 times 7 will give you 49. Then you now solve for the x, collect like term and divide through by the quotient of x. But I'm not going to do that because I want us to also start developing an appreciation and work on, you know, the concept of fractions. I would like to move this 33 over 7 to the right hand side. And then we are going to have 33 over 7 as negative on the right hand side. Now if you work out the LCM of this, you would get this is a whole number minus a fraction. The fastest way to obtain the LCM is use the denominator to multiply the whole number. So you get 49 and then minus 33. Divide everything by this denominator 7. So this would not give us that the value of x is equal to... So our x is equal to 49 minus 33 is going to give us 16. Is that not so? So that's going to be 16 over 7. And of course we have obtained the value of x. We can now conclude, therefore, that x, comma, y is equal to 16 over 7, comma, and then y is 33 over 33 over 14. And of course, we are done solving this question. This is going to take us to our third question that we have here, okay? In our next question, number three, permit me, please, I want to adjust the question later. And the reason is because there is something very important I want to explain to you, okay? Why we solve that question. If I use this equation straight on, I, it wouldn't satisfy what I really want to let you know. You can deal with this one straightforward. It's simple. Based on what we solved already, you know, just move minus y here. 2x plus y equal to 10. Then 3x minus 2y equal to 1. And you eliminate whatever I want to eliminate. But 
I want to make it a bit tougher and so that I would have success in what I want to have you learn because it's very important for you. Let's make this 6y and then permit me to change this to y to 4y. Okay, so let this be our question number 3. Now we have this question, this the simultaneous equation we have to solve. And I look at this equation one. Are you following right? Because we want the variables, the unknown, to be on one side of the equation, and then the constant number on the other side of the equation, because that's what you've been seeing. So I'm going to move this minus 6y to the left. So that equation one would become, now this is equation 1a. Let me call it equation 1a, because I got it from equation what? One. So what I now have to do, I have my equations to deal with now. Let me asterisk them. These are the equations you're going to solve. Because this one has been rewritten as this. This will not be the equation we would use properly to represent equation 1 in order to solve. So looking at equation 2 and equation 1a asterisk, using the elimination method, you decide which of the unknowns to eliminate. This time around, I want to eliminate y. Reason why in equation 2 and equation 1a, you notice that they have different signs. They have different signs. So I would like us to eliminate y and find out whether we have to add equation 1, 1a and 2 to eliminate, or whether we have to add equation 1a and 2 to eliminate y. In the first two questions we've solved, we, uh, we use subtraction method because the signs are the same. So in this case, that the signs of what I decide to eliminate are different. What do we do to eliminate it? So that's point number one I want you to be reflecting on. Then secondly, you notice if I choose to eliminate y, unfortunately, y does not have the same coefficient. This is 4y minus 4y, 4. And this is plus 6y, 6. And like I explained from the first question, if you decide to eliminate a particular unknown, the coefficient must be equal in terms of value, not sign necessarily. I follow it. Like in this case, minus and plus could still remain, but the number itself multiplying must be made to be equal. Four and six. Hmm. How do you make this coefficient of y equal? Remember, I told you the secret is LCM. This is four. This is six. Ask yourself, what is the LCM of four and six? And the LCM of 4 and 6 is simply 12. Alright? The fastest way to find out that is multiply this 6 by 4, you get 24. Then divide that 24 by the highest common factor of these two numbers. The highest number that can divide 4 and divide 6 is 2. So if you do 6 times 4, you get 24. Divided by 2, you get the LCM. So see, these stuffs are technically simple. They are easy stuffs to learn, okay? But you need good knowledge of LCM. And that reminds me also... You, you don't joke with your multiplication. I've said that in several of my previous videos, please. Your multiplication table is very important. Once you are good in that aspect, it will help you through in factors and multiples. It will help you through in the concept of LCM. It will help you through in the concept of HCF. So it is not about the level of learning that you are. These are basic aspects of math that have been built on. Are you following right? To get whatever we are studying in higher level or in a senior secondary school. So please, take these things very seriously, okay? Please, for your good. So, since the LCM of 4 and 6 is 12, all I have to do is to ask myself, how do I make this 6 to become 12? How do I make this 4 to become 12? And it's simple. To make 4 become 12, you multiply that 4 by 3. 4 times 3 is 12. To make 6 become 12, you multiply that 6 by what? 2. 6 times 2 is 12. And so doing that, you have made the quotient of y equal in both equations. So can you see how fun this is, right? Uh, sometimes, maybe if we have challenge in multiplication, but I want to change this to 12. How, what, what will I multiply 4 by? If that is stressing, you simply do 12, that's LCM divided by 4. It will give you the number that you have to use in multiplying 4 to get 12. But you can avoid all those things, please go and work on your multiplication table. Huh? Memorize them. Just cram them. Yeah. Something to play with, right from childhood. So if it has escaped your memory, you can work on it once again. Are you following, right? Then start practicing. Just one week is enough. You can memorize from two times table to nine times table. Like I said, 
Multiplication table does not respect level of learning, to be honest. I know you are going to do the right thing. Okay, let us move on, please. So, um, we are going to multiply equation 2 by 3. Doing that will give us 3 times two, uh, 3x here yeah, is going to give us uh, 9x. And then 3 times minus 4y will give us minus 12y equal to 3 times 1 will give us 3. So, you see, this would become equation 2a. That is what I choose to label it with. Simply to tell you that I obtained it from equation 2. Then remember, we are trying to make the coefficient of y to be the same in both equation 1a asterisk and 2 asterisk. So, coming to equation 1a now, this is 6. I've told you to change it to 12. You multiply that 6 by 2. What is the implication? It means that you are also going to do equation 1a, yeah, forget about the asterisk, times 2. And so we shall multiply each term there by 2. 2 times 2x would produce 4x. 2 times 6y would produce 6y. Then 2 times 10 would give us 20. And so I'm going to call this equation 1a prime. 1a prime. Like I said, you can number this equation with whatever you want, as long as you know where you got them from and what they stand for. But I prefer using this approach so that if anyone is going through what, you know, has been done, you will know, we got this from this, we got that from that. That's why I'm using this pattern. Otherwise, I could have just used equation 1, equation 2, equation 3, equation 4, equation 5. So we move on. At this point, remember that it's this simultaneous equation that I kept adjusting, adjusting, transforming, changing, are you getting? To get equation 2a and equation 1a prime. Generally, equation 2a came from equation 2. Of the original question and equation 1a prime came from equation 1 of the original question now at this point you notice that with these two equations uh, let me let me take them with these two equations you notice that y has the same coefficient well there's an error here okay 6 times 2 give us 12 so this is 12 y yeah because we multiplied equation 1a by 2 6 times 2 give us 12 now you notice that equation 2a and 1a prime, the value of y there, you know, they are now the same. So you can now eliminate. The question will now be how do I eliminate? You notice that in equation 2a, y there is negative. That's minus 12y. Then equation 1a prime, y there is positive, plus 12y. You see clearly that this variable, this unknown you want to eliminate, it has different signs, opposite signs in the two equations you are now dealing with. So to eliminate that y, you simply add. Remember I told you different signs you add. Let's add and see. 9x plus 4x will produce 13x. And then this y part will go off. If you want to stress yourself doing minus 12y plus... 12y, the choice is yours. But definitely, it's going to go to zero. Like I said, that is what you decide to eliminate. And you already made your coefficients to be equal. Come to this, 3 plus 20 will give us 23. And so the value of x, therefore, is going to be 23 all over, all over 13. That's correct. Now that you have obtained the value of x, you know what to do next? Go to any one of these 20 equations, this many equations you have on the board. Go to any one of them. And then fix in the value of x, 23 over 13. Solve for y. If I am the one in the example, I will use equation 1a to get my y. And that's what I'm going to do here. Good. So that's going to imply that we have 2 times the value of x. And the value of x is 23 over 13. Okay, then plus 6y, we do not know the value of y, so we leave it at that, equal to 10. Can now solve for y. These two cannot reduce this 13, so simply multiply 2 by 23, you will get 46. So it's going to be 46 over 13. Plus 6y equal to 10. Let's make use of this part. So this is 46 all over 13, and then plus 6y equal to 10. We are solving for y, so we'll find a way to make y subject of the formula. In question number two, I decided to move, you know, the fractional part to the other side of the equation and worked out, you know, the fraction. 
So this time around, I'll do other wines. I would like to clear fraction here. Like I said, you decide whichever approach. I'm mean, doing all these things so that you know which one will be easy for you and of course faster. Clearing this fraction, you notice that the denominator here is 13. The rest is 1, 1. So the LCM here will be 13. You use that 13 to clear this fraction. 13 will multiply each of these terms. 13 times 46 over 13. That 13 will cancel out. And then we left to it 46 plus 13 times 6y will produce, yeah, it's going to produce 78y, all right? And then that's going to be equal to 13 times 10, which will give us 130. This is cool. All we now have to do is collect like terms and solve for y. So we have 78y equal to 130 minus 46. 78y equal to 130 minus 46. Let's see what we get. So that's going to be 84. Yeah, that's going to be 84. So to get our y, we divide both sides by 84. So that y would now be equal to, oh no, we divide both sides by 78, the equations of y. So that's going to be 84 all over 78. We can reduce this term, 84 over 78. Okay, so um, using the rule of divisibility, let's see. Here, yeah, 2 can divide. 2 can also divide this denominator. And then I notice also that 3 can divide this 84. Uh, 7 plus 8 is 15. 3 can also divide this 78. Okay, so since 2 and 3 can divide this number, it means that 6 can divide because 2 times 3 will give you 6. So let us reduce this 84 over 78 by 6. We are going to get this. Now, uh, 6 goes into 8 is going to be 1 time remainder 2. Attach the 2 to this 4, you get 24. 6 into 24 is going to give us 14. And that's going to be over. 6 into 7 will be 1 time remainder 1. Attach the 1 to this 8, you get 18. 6 into 8 will give you 13. Good. So y is 14 over 13. We can now conclude. Therefore, x is equal to... Um, 23 over 13, and then y is equal to 14 over 13. Good. So, if you want to use x comma y, yeah, the choice is yours. Just like we presented uh, the answers to question number 1 and 2, that's going to be x comma y equal to 23 over 13 comma 14 over 13. And this is the solution to question number 3. Now, we have question number 4. Alright, before we move on to question number 4, please remember you can support the GMAT 41's channel so that we'll continue to grow and give the best of our, uh, you know, our ability as we've always done. Please, to do this, you can join our community in order to support this channel. All you have to do is click on the join button and then select whichever package that is convenient for you so you support this channel. So we can continue to grow, please, right? We appreciate that. And remember, when you join our community, uh, you are going to enjoy even more benefits, all right? Like our members only video. And also where we embark on step-by-step -step treating of topics in physics, chemistry, and mathematics. Also, you may wish to support this channel by sending us a super thanks. Just below this video lesson, you would see the super thanks icon. Click on it and please feel free to support us with whatever that uh, you're okay with that's convenient for you. Please like and share this video. If you're here to subscribe to my channel, kindly do so. Click the subscription button. All right, this is what is going to happen. Question number four, question five, question six are special kinds of simultaneous equation. We refer to them as simultaneous quadratic equation. You know, I would like to handle these questions in our next class. You will not want to miss that class. So stay tuned. But next week, the same day, we are going to look at simultaneous quadratic equation. You know, an equation that contains simultaneous equation as well as quadratic equation. So question 4, 5, and 6 will help you to learn that. And next week, like I said, the same day, we are going to have this class. Do have a wonderful time and continue to take your studies seriously.